My name is Amata and in the Red Gamer Tech video I am here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. So what do I have for you today my friends? Well, the first item on our itinerary is regarding the mysterious Vega 12 as it's been spotted in what might be an unexpected place for some. Then we have Nvidia and AMD perhaps feeling the wrath of their competition in the mining sector and then we're going to end out the video with a look at a review that was published in a French magazine for the Ryzen 7 2700X and Ryzen 5 2600X which gives us a peek at the performance so we're going to go through their results and I'm going to give my opinions on what they actually mean and all that good stuff. So let's begin things as I said with Vega 12. So essentially what we have here is a Linux patch that is indicating that Vega 12 may finally be on its way. Now this is a mainline kernel which received a set of 42 patches from AMD's engineers basically giving it support for a at the moment unreleased Vega 12 GPU. These were spotted by the guys over at Foronix and I will include a link to them in the description below this video and although this particular patch encompasses a staggering amount of code, 60,000 lines to be exact, a lot of it was spotted by again by the guys at Pharonix, that a lot of it is copy pasted from previous Vega 10 and Raven Ridge blocks. So we have five PCI IDs that have been spotted in the code, but this doesn't necessarily mean that we've got five GPUs. They're not, they, you know, they don't necessarily equal the quantity. So all this basically means, in short, that we know for sure is that Vega 12 has now been given support on Linux. So of course the speculation now begins as to what Vega 12 actually is. Well, it, the possibilities are pretty numerous to be honest. It could be a low powered version of the current GPUs available. It could be a brand new desktop GPU. It could even be Vega M. And the talk around the water cooler, as it were, does seem to lean towards it being a RX Vega M Vega 12. But of course, that is pure speculation based on nothing at all. So do take it for what it's worth. It could be a desktop or it could be mobile or it could even be both. Or it could actually be a cut down version of what we currently have available. So we just don't know. All we know is that something Vega 12 is coming. But the fact that the support has been added into Linux does mean that we'll probably learn what Vega 12 is quite soon and the mystery will finally be revealed. So with all that said, let's move on to our second item of today, which is regarding Nvidia, AMD and cryptocurrency. Now, of course, the amount of interest in the cryptocurrency mining craze has been nothing short of, well, insane, as we have seen graphics card prices being driven up as demand obviously goes way beyond what they originally expected and we have seen various efforts from GPU manufacturers as well as you know sellers of it like people such as Micro Center trying to basically circumvent the damage to gamers wallets as much as possible but now we're seeing a competitor potentially enter the market as a Wall Street analyst has said that both Nvidia and AMD are likely to lose business in the cryptocurrency market to emerging competitors. Now, these comments come from Susquina Financial Group analyst Christopher Rolland, who downloaded, downgraded, excuse me, AMD from neutral to negative and also cut his price targets on NVIDIA from 215 to 200. They did remain at neutral, however. Now, you might say, OK, I'm interested. Who is this competitor that could potentially see things rocked for NVIDIA and AMD in the cryptocurrency world? And it is none other than Bitmain Technologies, who are a China-based Bitcoin miner and designer of ASICs. And they have apparently developed an ASIC for mining Ethereum, to be specific. And apparently, according to Roland, production of this ASIC is already ramping up and of course it's going to continue to do so. So if this ASIC from Bitmain and of course the other competitors that are undoubtedly going to enter the market are successful, it has the ability to impact about 20% of AMD's total revenue and about 10% of Nvidia's. But apparently the beats don't stop there at least for Nvidia as apparently there are also ASICs for artificial intelligence which could, which could also impact Nvidia's data center business. 
So it's not just mining that they're going to have to worry about. You know, ASICs are being developed for things that are definitely going to disrupt and upset some people over at Camp NVIDIA and of course Camp AMD as well. Now obviously AMD and NVIDIA aren't just worried about mining. That is definitely a huge portion of their GPU revenue right now. But they are very aware that that is a bubble that could burst at any moment. And of course say an ASIC does come along and take some of the strain off of NVIDIA and AMD, well, they'll, they'll probably just release something better that may or may not be better for mining, or even if it isn't any good for mining, it's going to be great for gamers and all that sort of stuff as well. So they're obviously going to be focused on that rather than worrying too much about mining at the moment. So... If this does happen, it may actually result in potentially the prices of graphics cards meant for gaming going down a little bit as miners move over to ASICs. That could definitely be one solution to this whole my graphics card now costs the same as a kidney situation or it could just not have an impact at all. But it's definitely going to be interesting to see what actually happens here. It definitely is going to have an impact, I would say, if Bitmain and, of course, the other competitors are successful. If we see good results on them, obviously, if they're less expensive than, say, a 1070 or a 1080 and that sort of thing, we could see some positive results in terms of the price going down and some not-so-positive results in AMD and NVIDIA being impacted. But, to be honest, I would be surprised if they haven't been expecting something like this already and have been preparing for it, and obviously still working hard on the next generation of graphics cards for both the high end, medium end, and of course the low end as well. So, let's cut to the chase shall we, as we end out our video with Ryzen 7 2700X and Ryzen 5 2600X. So, as I said in my introduction to this video, we have the Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 5 being reviewed by a French magazine by the name of CPC Hardware, and again, they tested the two I already mentioned, as well as the Ryzen 5 2600. Now, for those of you wondering, these CPUs were tested on an A320 motherboard, and that will become relevant later, but let's talk results first. Now, as you can see on the screen, what they've actually done is posted the average results. So, essentially, you'll see near the bottom of the graph for the top performance graph, which is what we're going to look at first, is 100% for the i5-7600K. Basically, consider that the baseline, and anything above that is great, and anything below that is obviously not so great. So, these are averages, which, again, will come into things later on, but it gives you a rough idea of what to expect. So, this top one, it obviously is all in French, but we can still read the numbers. Anyone who wants to translate that little paragraph there is more than welcome to do so. So we've got you know, Mathematica, Blender, Corona and a few benchmarks that you can see. And we see some impressive results for the Ryzen 7 2700X. Reigning right at the top as you can see. Rising above even the 1800X and of course the 8700K as well. Regarding the Ryzen 5, that is reigning supreme out of the Ryzen 5s reigning just slightly above the 2600 and of course pretty resoundingly beating the 7700K and of course far above the Ryzen 5 1600 vanilla and of course the Core i5s that we have down the bottom. So essentially the TLDR of all of that is Ryzen 7 2700X is 175%, the Ryzen 5 2600X is 138% and the Ryzen 5 2600 is 128%. So let's talk gaming, shall we? Now, I will admit the choice of games is definitely uh, interesting to say the least, and we do definitely see some different results here in comparison to the Blender and the 3DS Max results. As you can see, the top dog here is definitely the 7700K, reigning just ever so slightly above the 8700K, but of course, we're more concerned with Ryzen. So interestingly enough, we see the 20, sorry, the Ryzen 7 2700X and the Ryzen 5 2600X coming very, very close together as the Ryzen 5 2700X is only a couple of percent under that of the 2700X. Now, while the Ryzen 5 does do better than that of the 7700X and, of course, the 1500X, it is obviously ranking the lowest out of the ones that we care about and, of course, ranking beneath the 7600K and, of course, well under the results of the 87 and 7700K. But I know you're thinking, okay, that's great and all, but what does that actually mean? Well, it basically means that the 2700X delivers 14% better performance in multi-threading workloads compared to last gen, which is, of course, the 1800X. 
the 2600, excuse me, is 11% better, and the Ryzen 5 2600 is 8% better. But of course, the gaming performance is what you all really care about, and the performance uplift for the 80, 1800X is around 4%, while the Ryzen 5 2600X is around 4.2% better than its predecessor. And the Ryzen 5 2600 is a 4%, sorry, 4.3% increase over the Ryzen 5 1600. Now, they didn't just test that, but they also looked at latency. And we do see much lower latency compared to first generation Ryzen parts, which of course is to do with all the tweaking and improvements that AMD have done to the architecture. Now what's also interesting is that we have precision, precision Boost, excuse me, to thank for much better scaling across boosting for all the cores. So obviously you can still see the usual decrease as the amount of cores go up, but it is still an improvement over the previous generation and just generally you're seeing a higher turbo. Now the last thing that I want to discuss is actually power consumption. Now we do see an increase in power consumption for the 2700X and of course the 2600X, but we're talking a few watts at best. So it's not exactly anything that's going to break the break your back as it were. You know, if it comes down to a few watts and I'd argue you need a new power supply anyway because that's kind of playing with fire a little bit. And of course we already know that we have a TDP for the 2700X of 105 watts. But overall, we're looking at a 13 watts jump in TDP for the CPU, and obviously this is without any overclocking, but again, this is a fairly small number. If we're talking like 100 or even 50, I might be concerned, but again, this is 13 watts jump in TDP, and the 2600X takes a jump of 17 watts over the Ryzen 5 at 1600X. So an increase, but I'd say an increase that is kind of inconsequential if you ask me. So throughout all of that, I've kind of been referencing a few issues that I have. Now, I'm not saying by any means that we should chuck these results in the bin. It'd also be great if I could speak. But there are a few things to keep in mind with these results. And I would say it's good to consider this a preview, but I would say before making any decisions about any purchases or anything like that, we should wait for launch reviews and all that sort of thing for a few reasons that I'll get to just now. Now, the first thing that I kind of touched on earlier is regarding the motherboard, A320. It is, of course, the lowest end board possible. It would have been better to see a B350 or a 400 series because, well, there's a few improvements there. You know, X400 boards have PCIe 3.0 and as well as precision boost overdrive, which results in better clocks, as well as lower power consumption. Now, again, this is not anything crazy like, you know, the X400, you know, sloots laser beams into your eyes that actually transports you into the, you know, the gaming world. But it is stall stuff that has an impact. Now, the fact that all benches were averaged as well is understandable. I can totally get why they did that. It made it 45,000% easier to present in a magazine format. But we don't have a breakdown of the performance. And given the choices of the games, that is important. Because not only do you have games like, say, The Witcher 3, which, as great as it is for benchmarking, is a resource hog. And if you have a game that is kind of skewing the averages a little bit, you can kind of get where I'm going with this. But that isn't the only issue with the games. Games are either a bit older, as you can see on the screen once again. They are either older or single thread leaning. Now, this is a very common theme, as you're sure you will know if you are at all into your PC gaming. AMD does tend to struggle when it comes to single thread. So that does make it harder to tell the performance differences between, say, a 7700 and a 8800K, but it does also push heavily against Ryzen. Now, I'm not saying this was deliberate. I'm by no means saying that. I am just, but what I am saying is just keep that in mind. These games are older or single thread leaning. So we are seeing kind of Ryzen at a little bit of a disadvantage is all I'm saying. So yes, it's great as a preview. It looks very, very interesting. I've got some very promising results here for the 2700X and of course the 2600X. But I'm just simply saying we should wait for BIOS revisions as well because of course that does come into things as well. We don't know what sort of updates are gonna improve performance when the launch BIOS finally comes out, all that sort of stuff. So, again, a lovely preview for what's happening with the 2700X, but I would personally wait to see what's happening when the chips are actually released. 
So there you have it, that is me done for today's video, thank you very much for watching, your support is always appreciated, do remember to like and subscribe as it really does help us out a great deal, and of course let me know your opinions in the comments below, you've heard me talk for over 15 minutes now, so let your voices be free my friends, I'll see you next time.